Hello everyone, I am Vimmi and I welcome you to the session based on a very significant concept in grammar called verbs. Do you like stories and songs? Okay, so let's begin our class today with an interesting story of nouns and verbs that includes a verb song as well. One day the nouns picked up a quarrel with the verbs. They started speaking highly of themselves by saying that we are the most significant concepts in grammar. We name each and everything. The day we stop giving names to others, no one will know or identify them. See how important we are and verbs you are so insignificant. The verbs smiled and listened calmly to what the nouns had to say. The verbs started singing a song which went on like this. Nouns claim to run the grammar game because of all the things they name. Just think, look and see, nouns depend on verbs like me. A person could not walk, talk, play or climb a tree. Any place you name could not even be. Without a verb, a bell can't ring, a bear can't dance, a bird can't sing, the sun can't shine, the moon can't glow, trees need verbs to make them grow. And now you know why verbs expect nouns to give us some respect. When the nouns heard this song, they realized their foolishness and also the significance of verbs in grammar. That was the last day they spoke ill or low of others. They asked the verbs for forgiveness and after that the nouns and the verbs became the best friends forever. Hope you enjoyed the story. Now let's read the list of verbs that we have come across in the verb song. Claim, to run, name, think, look, see, depend, could, walk, talk, play, climb, can, be, ring, dance, sing, shine, glow, need, to make, grow, know, expect and to give. So after listening the story and going through the list of verbs from the verb song, what can we say about verbs? Yes, we can say that verbs are the most important part of a sentence. In fact, we cannot form a sentence without a verb. For example, somebody at the door. Is that a sentence? No, that is not a sentence. Somebody is knocking at the door. Is that a sentence? Yes, it is a sentence. During the session, we are going to learn various significant aspects of grammar relevant to our grammar text of class 4 titled Everyday English Grammar and Composition which includes the following about verbs. Different ways of forming verbs. What does a verb tell? The verb root that is the base form or the root form of verbs. Different forms of the verb root or the base forms of verbs like be, to have and doing verbs. Main verbs and helping verbs followed by subject verb agreement and rules and we will end the module with an activity. So let us begin with the formation of verbs, the different ways in which a verb can be formed. A verb can be formed in different ways by using one word, two words or three words. 
First, let us learn about verbs formed with one word. A verb made up of one word. My sister ate a mango. Can you tell me the verb in this sentence? Yes, ate is the verb in this sentence which is made up of one word. Now let's move on to a verb made up of two words. For example, the girl is swimming in the pool. In this sentence, as you can see, is swimming is the verb in the sentence which is made up of two words, is swimming. A verb is also made up of three words. For example, I will be doing my homework soon. In this sentence, can you identify the verb? Yes, the verb is will be doing, which is made up of three words, will, be and doing. A verb tells us about the subject in a sentence. A subject can be a noun or a pronoun. So what does a verb tell? A verb tells us about the subject in a sentence as to what a subject is. Here verbs denote the being of the subject. What the subject does. Here verbs express actions. And what the subject has. Here verbs denote possession or belonging of the subject. Let's try to understand it more clearly one by one with the help of some examples. Let's begin with the verbs that tell us what the subject is, that is the verbs that denote being of a subject. Let's read the following sentences. I am a smart boy. Can you identify the subject and the verb in this sentence? Yes, I is the subject and am is the verb in this sentence. The verb am in this sentence tells us about the being of the subject I that is a pronoun. Let's read the next sentence. The cat is fat. Can you identify the subject in this sentence? Yes, the cat is the subject in this sentence. And what about the verb? What is the verb in this sentence? Yes, is is the verb in this sentence. In this sentence, the verb is tells us that the cat is fat. Now let's move on to knowing more about verbs that tell us what a subject does. These verbs are also called action verbs. For example, Ravi drinks a glass of milk every day. In this sentence, Ravi is the subject and drinks is the verb. The verb drinks tells us what the subject Ravi does every day. Now let's move on to the next sentence. The children are playing. Can you identify the subject and the verb in this sentence? Yes, children. The children is the subject in this sentence and are playing is the verb in this sentence. Next, we are going to learn about verbs that tell us what the subject has. In other words, the belonging or the possession of the subject. Let us read out some examples. They have four balloons. Yes, children. Can you identify the verb and the subject in this sentence? Yes. In this sentence, they is the subject and the verb is have. The verb have in this sentence tells us about the belonging of the subject. That is they. They have four balloons. Let's move on to the next sentence. A parrot has a curved beak. Can you identify the subject and the verb in this sentence? Yes, a parrot is the subject in this sentence and has is the verb in this sentence. 
In this sentence, the verb has tells us that the parrot has a curved beak. Just like the roots help a tree to nourish and grow, in the same way, we have verb roots in grammar which are called as the base form or the root form of verbs from which the verbs are made. So what is a verb root? All verbs are made from the root or the base form of verbs also known as verb root. And how does this verb root function? The base form or the verb root has no endings attached to it like s, ing or ed at the end. They only function in simple present forms. Let us try to understand this more clearly with the help of different forms of verbs. Let us begin with the different forms of the verb be. Am, is, are, was, were, being and been are the different forms of the verb be. So we can say that the verb be tell us what the subject is. In other words, they denote the being of the subject. Let's try to understand it more clearly with the help of a visual where you can see a tree along with its roots. As you can see here, B is the base form or the root form of the verb. Am, is, are, was, were, being and be are the different forms of the verb be. Now let us move on to understanding of how verbs are formed with doing verbs. All action verbs are formed from the base or the root form of doing words. Let us try to understand this with the help of an example. Sit, sits, sitting and sat. As you can see, the first word is sit. Sit is the verb root or the base form of the verb or the root form of the verb. So sit is the verb in the pure form. And you can see how all the other action words have been made from the base form of the verb sit. Sits is in the simple present tense form. Sitting is in the present continuous form. And sat is in the simple past tense form. Let's move on to the next example. Eat, eats, eating, ate, eaten. By learning the example of sit, we already have understood that eat is the base form or the root form of the verb. And as you can see, all other action verbs have been made using the base form or the root verb form eat. Eats is in the simple present tense form. Eating is in the present continuous form. Eight is in the past tense form and eaten is the past participle form. Let's try to understand the different forms of the verb to have. Has, have and had. These are the verbs made from the root form or the base form of the verb to have. We also have to keep a very important thing in mind. The verb have not only denotes the possession or belonging of the subject, it not only tells us what the subject has, but it also means to eat or to experience. Let us try to understand it with the help of few examples. Ravi has fruits every morning. As you can see in this sentence, the verb has has been used but it does not denote the belonging or the possession. It does not say what the subject has, that is what it owns. Instead, it tells us that the subject 
is eating something, the subject eats something. The verb has denotes the subject eats something. Let's move on to the next example. We had lots of fun at the picnic. In this sentence, the verb had tells us about the experience of the subject we. It does not denote the belonging, the possession of the subject or it does not tell what the subject has. Just like in cartoons and movies, there are characters or actors who play the main role and the supporting roles. In the same way in grammar, we have verbs in sentences which act as main verbs or helping verbs. First, let us try to understand what are main verbs. Main verbs are the important verb in the sentence, the one that typically shows the state of being, action or belonging of the subject. Next, main verbs stand alone or they can be used with a helping verb. Let us try to understand it more clearly with the help of few examples. She is a nurse. As you can see in this sentence, the verb is standing alone. It acts as a main verb. It tells us about what the subject she is in the sentence. Let's have a look at another example. Larry lives in a big house. In this sentence, the verb lives gives us information about the subject that is Larry. The third example, we play every day. In this sentence, the verb play express action. Now let us move on to learning of helping verbs. Let us try to understand what are helping verbs. Helping verbs are the different forms of the verb be and have which are used to help the action or the main verbs in a sentence. So helping verbs play a very important role. They help or support the main verbs or action verbs in a sentence. Let us try to find out how they help the main verbs in the sentence with the help of some examples. I am writing a letter. In this sentence, am is the helping verb and writing is a main verb. The verb am is helping the main verb writing in this sentence. Let's move on to the next sentence. Priya has finished her work. Can you identify the helping verb in this sentence and the main verb in this sentence? Yes children, has is the helping verb in this sentence and finished is the main verb in this sentence. By this time, we have established a very clear understanding of what is a subject and what is a verb in a sentence. Now let us learn more about the subject and the verb agreement. So what is a subject and verb agreement? It means that the subject and the verb in a sentence must agree in number. There are many rules of subject verb agreement in grammar, but we are going to cover few rules that are relevant to our grammar text of class 4. Let's begin with rule 1 that talks about a singular subject and a singular verb. Rule 1. If the subject in a sentence is singular, then a singular verb must be used. And what are the singular verbs that can be used when the subject is singular? Yes, is, was, has, does or the verbs ending with s or es can be used when the subject is singular in a sentence. Let's try to understand rule 1 with the help of certain examples. A frog lives in water and on land. So in this sentence, can you identify the singular subject? Yes, a frog is the singular subject in this sentence. 
What about the singular verb used with the singular subject frog in this sentence? Yes, lives is the singular verb that has been used with the singular subject frog in this sentence. Let's have a look at another example. Sam is watering the plants. So can you tell me what is the singular subject in this sentence? Yes, Sam is the singular subject in this sentence. And what singular verb has been used with the singular subject Sam in this sentence? Is is the singular verb that has been used with the singular subject Sam in this sentence. Now let's move on to rule 2 which deals with a plural subject and a plural verb. If the subject in a sentence is plural, then a plural verb must be used. What plural verbs can be used if the subject is plural in the sentence? Let's find out. Are, were, have, do or the verbs without S or ES ending can be used when the subject is plural in the sentence. Let's try to understand it more clearly with the help of few examples. Frogs live in water and on land. Can you identify the plural subject in this sentence? Yes, the plural subject is frogs in this sentence. And when a plural subject is used, According to the rule, what verbs can be used? Yes, when the subject is plural, the verb also must be plural. So over here in the sentence, since the plural subject frogs has been mentioned, along with that, we can find the plural verb that is live. Let's move on to the next sentence. Sam and Tina are watering the plants. In this sentence, the plural subject is Sam and Tina. Can you identify the plural verb that has been used for Sam and Tina in this sentence? You are right. The plural verb is are that has been used for the plural subject Sam and Tina in this sentence. Now let's move on to rule number 3 that is related to the pronouns you and I. Let us begin with the pronoun you. If the pronoun you is the subject of a sentence, then a plural verb must be used. What are the plural verbs that can be used when the subject is a pronoun you? Let's find out. Are, were, have, do or the verbs without s or es ending can be used if the pronoun you is used in a sentence. Now let's learn about the pronoun I and what verbs can be used with the pronoun I in the sentence when the subject is I. If the subject is I, that is a pronoun in the sentence, then the verbs am, was, other plural verbs such as have, do or the verbs without s or es ending must be used. Now we have come to the last rule that we are going to learn in today's class and that is the rule of uncountable nouns in sentences. So what verbs must be used when you come across uncountable nouns in sentences? Uncountable nouns make use of singular verb forms. For example, health is wealth. Here health is an uncountable noun that is making use of the singular verb is. Let's move on to the next sentence. The water is overflowing. In this sentence, the uncountable noun is water and the singular verb is has been used for the uncountable noun. I hope you all have got a very clear understanding of verbs and its usage in sentences. Now it's activity time. There is an activity coming up for you and the activity is write five sentences on the following visuals by using main verbs 
only in the first two sentences and main verbs plus helping verbs in the other three sentences. Let's have a look at the visuals. This is the first visual here. This is the second visual. They have been combined on a slide. With this, we come to an end of our class. I hope you had a great learning experience. Take care and God bless. Thank you.